Whit, welcome in. Steve Phillips, Harold Reynolds, how are you? Great, guys. Hope you are. Whit, how's the golf game, man? You know, it's pretty good. Uh, I live in North Carolina, so this is like, we're usually pretty mild and can get out and play up until about January, and then it gets cold and icy, and it's about where we are. So, um, but it's about, it's, it's, it's pretty good. All right, let's get the business out of the way first, then we'll dive into baseball. So, is this a charitable component to this? Tell us about the tournament, and then we'll jump into some baseball talk. Uh, well, it's a it's a unique tournament in a sense where it's the LPGA uh, ladies playing in, in, in their tournament, and then the celebrities have their own tournament going on kind of at the same time. And uh, so it's a, it's a unique deal. Uh, Annika Sorenstam's around here, and, and her charity um, has a relationship with this tournament, and and. Uh, raise some money for that, um, but it's a uh, it's a cool way to come out and and compete. How much pressure are you feeling playing with an LPGA pro that you're not going to mess up their game getting out there and playing with them? Uh, you know, I've been fortunate to play in in uh, some events. I played an event out in Pebble Beach for a couple years now, a few years, and uh, you play with a the pro then. So I've got kind of gotten used to that. But this will be the first um, tournament I've played in with like kind of a legit gallery and it's on TV. And uh, so the nerves will be, the nerves will be running pretty high. <laughs> so I, I got two questions on that. One, who you, who you playing with first? And then my second one, I want to dive into for a second. You know, you're playing. I don't know yet that, that the, um, the pairings is tonight. So okay. we'll find out tonight who we're playing and then, with. Then the other thing I know there's no way in the world I could do this, but, and I wouldn't do it as a fan anyway, but I'm not leaning in watching nobody swing. And you're, and you're hitting that thing, especially you're not a pro golfer. I'm not leaning my head in there. Are people that close when you're getting ready to strike the ball? Um, from the golf tournaments that I've seen, they're, they're pretty close. And I'm with you, especially when it comes to the amateurs. Um, I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty good golfer, um, but I'm, I'm still – the, the hosel on my club is still very much in play, and so I uh, I would not advise anybody to, to to lean over and watch me hit hit a golf ball. <laughs> so so I understand that somewhere along the way you've had a hole in one uh, to your golf game. Tell us about that. I did. I got it over the uh, that COVID uh, lockdown. I was playing with my dad, which was which was cool to to share that moment with him. And. Um, Quick story about it. I was, we were playing at a, at a course that I'm not a member at, and so we got grouped with this this big group of guys that go out and play every Wednesday or whatever it was. And uh, after the, the second part three on the front, the guy says, by the way, in our group, we have an agreement. If anybody makes a hole in one, uh, everybody chips out $100. And there was like 16 guys playing. And I said to him, I said, you should have told me that from the beginning. Or I would have made, I would have tried to make a hole in one. And the next, the next par three, the first par three on the back, I made a hole in one. Wow. And uh, I got like, like 11 of the 16 guys paid me. <laughs> they weren't very happy with me. Hey, hey, so, so then you should be trying to get a hole in one with this free agency and getting paid. So let's talk a little baseball. What you're an all-star last year, and here you are out in the free agent market. Has We just got through talking, had a great discussion about Blake Snell's a Cy Young Award winner. Montgomery had a great – does any of those awards help you in free agency? Uh, you would like to think they they do. You know, they, I don't think they hurt, um, but I don't think they they uh, create the value that they probably should. Um, you know, it's it's a business, so, you know, teams are they're trying to, to – you know, behind the scenes, they're probably looking at the good stuff, but then they show they're showing you the bad stuff to try to get you at a at a price where they feel is beneficial for the team. So you know, it's uh, there's a business aspect to it, which is never never fun, but it's part of the game. And um, but yeah, I mean, I think the awards are uh, important, especially when when they are uh, kind of player driven awards, and those are you know those are the guys out there that are playing that appreciate guys that are doing things that they do at a high level. So I think those awards should be taken a little more well, in consideration when it comes to stuff like this. When I see a guy like you, it kind of frustrates me with where we're at in the sport because I've watched you be an all-star a couple times now, and then I watched you go to camp with Toronto, have to fight in a position, and then be an all-star. 
And so I just don't think that, that that's right where we're at in the industry. And so off that, I can speak that. You probably can't. So I'm saying that on your defense. So I'm questioning now, um, as a free agent, how's everybody viewing you? Are they looking at you like saying, hey, we can, we got a spot at second, or we got a spot in center, or we got your utility? What, what's the market like? What are they at? What's the ask? Well, I think my, with my game, um, I'm in a little bit of an advantage when it comes to that because, you know, if, if a team needs a, uh, an outfielder, I can f fill in and play that role. If a team needs a second baseman, I can fill in and play that role. If a team needs a guy that can bounce around and do it all, I can do that as well. Um, I I've always said I think the best version of me as a baseball player is when I'm playing second base every day. Uh, I think that's when my defense is at its best. Um, it, there's a consistency factor to it, and I think I'm the best defender personally at second base than I am in the outfield. I still think I'm pretty good in, in the outfield as well, but um, so it just depends on on the team that, that what they're looking for, and um, so we're, we're we're going through that now and uh, trying to figure out what's going to be the best fit and um, and try to take my value, try to appreciate my value and, and stick to it. Boy, all this talk about general managers, you know, as a former general manager, general managers sort of focusing on the negative things and the weaknesses instead of the strength. Yeah, let's go, Steve. Down. Like, I'm taking that, like, I, like <laughs> you're right. You're 100% right. We kind of do that. We don't want to oversell like we really want you because that means we have to pony up the money with it. So, but let me ask you this. Offensively, you know, you play some left field, you play some second base, you played a little bit of right field last year. Your offensive game, how much is that ever impacted by where you're playing in the field? Um, I, I, you know, personally, I don't think it does for me anyway, because I've done this for so long that it's just kind of, um, it's kind of second nature to me to just sort of show up and look at the lineup and just kind of see where I'm playing. What, what, glove, what glove do I need to grab today? Um, it doesn't, I don't think it necessarily affects my offense a whole lot. And I think, I don't know for sure, but I think my Let's kind of kind of show that um, that I've been pretty pretty much the same hitter at second base or the outfield. Um, so yeah. Well, you got one of the best nicknames in baseball. I mean, two hit wit. Yeah. Well, I, I, that that's pretty cool stuff. When, when did that first start? When did you first start hearing that? That was uh, my guy Mike Sweeney over in Kansas City when. Mm. Uh, when I was on the what he called purgatory field, which was the field two in, in big league camp where all the like the low level prospects go to die. Um, so we were over there and you know, I, would, I would get to play. God, I think one year I played, I think I played in every single spring training game, but maybe one or two. And most of those, I think all but three I was coming in on. And so it was a long year for me. And, um, and Sweeney was Sweeney's the ultimate hype man. And I had a really good spring, and um, he was too. You know, he, we would, uh, we'd have a meeting like the first of the first part of the day, and kind of go over the day before. And if I got in and got a hit, like Sweeney, kind of like I was kind of his guy then that year, and he always like made a point to speak up extra loud and say that uh, that I got two hits that day, or whatever it was, and he would just start calling me two hit wit. I'm oh, two hit wit, got two hits today, and he's trying to. <laughs> Get my name out there a little bit. I so I always yeah. appreciate Sweeney. I love it. Hey, you've been around long enough. Last question. I'm, I'm curious. Favorite ballpark to hit in? Background, you name it, where you see the ball best. Uh, or maybe you don't even get hits there. Favorite ballpark? Oh, um, probably Fenway. Uh, Fenway's my yeah. favorite park to play in, I, 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 I should say. Um, I think I've had the most – success in Seattle for whatever reason that may be. I see the ball pretty well in Seattle. Um, but if I had to pick a place to play like day in, day out, there's just a different energy in Fenway. And that's uh yeah, Both that those clubs answer. can use you, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is an opportunity. Like, like, I would start naming every team I want to go play for we right might, now. We might call <laughs> with might, as well. We so. might have to call Mike Sweeney on that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah get him out there <laughs> campaigning <laughs> for you. Yeah. So, well, listen, well, thanks for giving us the time. Great to catch up with you. Good luck in the golf tournament as well. Good luck in free agency. We we'll look forward to watching you play again next year.